you get it? Is it on? <laughs> Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Taking Over the World. With Ed and Aaron, what's up, brother? Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity! Oh, brother? Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity! Come on, now. I'm the, I'm the guy. Ah, uh, do you guys miss oh, it? Ed was in here busting out some old... Ultimate... Were you at Miami DJ in another life? No, but I was actually a DJ one time. We were chasing uh, Marshmallow Head before he came out and they saw his face. Uh, we were on our way back from California. And... We drove up and we saw the, the marshmallow head in the back of the car. Oh. He was coming from Cali too. And we pulled up next to him. And the only thing I could do, sitting in my car, while he's in his car, going 75 miles an hour on the freeway. And I'm actually in my car, windows up, AC blaring. And me going, we can, we can, we can. Like if he can hear me. <laughs> my kids have taken... They've laughed about that for the last 10 years. I actually did hear a hilarious, now that I say that, I did hear a hilarious DJ story over the weekend. I saw an interview, it was like on the Bobby Jones show or whatever, the guy who does like country right. music, whatever. Bobby Jones show had a girl on nice. um, as an interview. And he was like, he was just talking about like, hey, have you, like, did you ever anticipate this kind of fame and, you right. know, like your appearances and talking like about money, like in the last few weeks, like, I, I, floored with it all and uh she was talking about she just dj'd with one shaquille o'neal i first of all i didn't know uh shazam or jazam what he was a I, I thought that was like a long time ago thing no, that he did apparently yeah apparently he's back in or doing it he does country music so well time. so he was asking him he's like so do you like what did you do like what kind of dj do you have dj experience she's like oh oh no like i just i was in the booth and it's just so he's like well did you do actually any dj or were you just standing? she's like no i was in charge of hitting the the button that puts out the, you know that fog stuff so he's like <laughs> so shag was djing and you just hit the hawk to a fog button she's like yeah pretty much <laughs> Oh. So, so yeah okay so yeah that's what i did i did that 10 years ago and they make fun of me all the time uh, uh, but i have a a, a a thing i heard this weekend Ooh. i actually heard it this morning did you know there's three types now that we've committed to going mm. to the gym and we're we're all we're all into this gym yeah gym, there's three types of gym people Oh, are we talking like gym stereotypes? Because I got yeah. all sorts of gym. Yeah, so there's I, three types of gym people. I love people. this. I couldn't be more excited about this conversation because I am the biggest. I'm by nature a terrible, terrible, terrible people watching person. <laughs> like I will stare people down. Like my wife's like, I'm surprised you don't get punched more often. Because like if we're in the airport or restaurant, like I'm just like. <laughs> and then I'm trying to like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out them. I'm trying to see the situation. I'm trying to put it all. Like, oh, all hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm like, I analyze it, and I've got this thing built up in my head. Like, I can run a storyboard <laughs> off watching these people. And when I go to the gym, I am the same way. I'm just like, oh yes, I. So this, oh, this I can't is wait. for sure. Gym stereotypes from a guy who's owned and been a personal trainer for 24 years okay. plus in a gym. So he says there's three types of gym people. Oh, there's yes. the morning gym person. Okay. The evening gym person. Okay. And the afternoon gym person. Okay. So the morning gym person uh -huh. is somebody who has their shit together. They're all over it. Okay. They know exactly what they're going to do. They're dedicated. They're consistent. They're going to do exactly what they need to do to okay. get in and out of their gym. Go in. They're efficient. They come in, get their workout done. They go home. Okay. The evening person is somebody who has no idea what's None. going on in the world. Zero. <laughs> Zero. They just put it in Fly the by to the seat of their there pants. There you go. Put it in the afternoon just so you can say that at least I went yep. to the gym. They're <laughs> putting it in their stories every day <laughs> that they went to the gym. 100%. Okay. And then the middle, the, the, the middle of the day is subdivided. This is what he said, not me, into three subcategories. Oh. So one is moms. Okay. They go during the day because kids are off at school and whatever. Okay. Two are criminals because they have no other job. <laughs> this is what he said. Okay. Okay. And they're just, most criminals don't wake up early. Exactly. And they're out committing crime at night. Okay. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> uh, he, he said it, not me, folks. <laughs> I didn't say it. No, this is the guy. That okay. This is the guy. Sir. This is an, an anonymous source. Yeah, okay. Gonna... Okay. And then the third group. So it's, it's the, the moms, the criminal, and then the influencer. Who's going there just to say they're going there and taking videos and stuff of, of themselves to put all, all over social I, media? You have transformed the way that I think about the gym now. Because now <laughs> I'll be going in the afternoon. Not because I'm a criminal. 
Uh, I'm not a mom. Um, I'm not really sure I'm an influencer either, but <laughs> I would like to go from the people watching. Pers- I might go in the morning to work out, go just like take like maybe, I don't know, make a drink, get a smoothie, go sit and like sit there and watch those three subcategories <laughs> interact because I got to, I got to imagine mom asking like, you know, like maybe, maybe let's just say she's working for some free weights or something and needs some help turning to the criminal and asking for a spot in my mind. All that I'm picturing is Martha Stewart bench pressing, asking Snoop Dogg to help her lift the bench. That's all that's because obviously with the, and switching gears, but I'm coming right back to this because I got more gym people because that's what I'm thinking in my head. Right. And so it's, it's Martha Stewart asking Snoop Dogg Dog for a spot on the bench. hundred percent. That's what's going through my head right now. Well, there's a, some influencer taking a picture of them selfie in the mirror. Okay. <laughs> Um, catching them in the background doing this. That's my, that's what's in my head right now. Um, but I did see Snoop Dogg. I mean, I think we talked about it last time, but that would have been dope. That would have been dope. Snoop Dogg. I mean, he basically is America at this point with the Olympics. I mean, he is the USA mascot. He Uh, is officially. Did you see him dressed up at the horse jumping parading? No. Um, I, equestrian, equestrian yes no. whatever not not i i just don't know the name of it people right. I, i'm sorry um but dude he was the, the whole get up he had the pants the jacket the helmet on no uh, way oh. i mean snoop dogg at this point is an american i mean hero he's an he, american he is hero a, now. a maybe hero is not the right way uh i mean he he goes he's a pastime he is he is the guy i mean he has come out of the olympics full gold medal well, he's if anybody had any doubts about snoop he is 100 percent gold medal I at this think point snoop's been Ever since he teamed up with Martha, I think he's changed his whole just dynamic. Yeah. I think people like Do you him. think do you think like Martha checked him? It was like, listen, bro, I think I know you think you're hard. I've been drinking wine out of the toilet for like six months out of this what is this white collar jail thing, like also gardening and cooking, like Oh, I'm sure she I did. got some street credit and you need to check yourself. I'm and sure we're gonna rebrand did. together. Yeah, and I think for her it's probably the smartest marketing move ever. Because you come out of jail, right? I mean, you go to jail for some white crime, white collar crime, right? So you're you're in the club fed. Club yeah, fed, yeah. Club fed, yeah. having a good time. You come out, and instead of like trying to, which has happened to a bunch of different people, right? A, a bunch of people have been canceled or had all these bad scenarios, and they just like disappear. She's like, no, I'm going to embrace my badness. I'm going to go with the original OG, Snoop Double D, Double oh. G, and go with him and be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> I mean, it's so brilliant. She, it, She's it's brilliant. brilliant. She's it's brilliant. brilliant. They did it together. They've, they've kind of formed this unlikely partnership where everybody's like, oh, wait, what's, what's going on with these people? And it works. And he's gotten even more famous than he was. She's gotten more famous than she was, and it's just worth it. It's, it's marketing wise, it's brilliant. Uh, pff, no argument here. No argument it, here. It is truly brilliant. I'm going back to the the gym stereotypes. Let's, let's go back to the Here's gym. the people that drive me bonkers. 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 Okay. One is, and I see I see this guy. It's the same guy you've seen him in. Well, you actually nobody's awake at your gym at the time you go. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the gym where people are, are there at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, you've already gone back, eaten, taken it, taken a nap, woke back up, and <laughs> ready for the day. Okay, but there's there's the guy, and we all know him, just trying to rack like the cables, right? Like I see, I saw him yesterday. He's trying to do some tricep press downs. Oh, okay. Okay. And so he's got the cable, he's got the angle bar, and I mean, he's got this thing almost racked, right? So he's got the almost the bar. Two hundred. Right, and I'm like, I'm looking at him. I'm like, bro, you cannot lift that. Like, like you, you're not packing the horseshoe, okay? Right, right, like, right. and so what does he do? He gets all up on top of it, and he just, I'm like, bro, you're moving like a centimeter, <laughs> and he does like seven, and he just slams it back down. Like, that is not a great workout. Like, what do we do? I don't like those people. Like, they just, they make me cringe because I'm like, dude, just cut that thing in half, do good form. And watch yourself build muscle. Like, you've probably been going to this gym for three years, and your triceps haven't gotten any bigger because of the way that you work out. <laughs> it drives me bonkers when people try to so, over And I'm, like, I'm not the best gym guy, but my dad taught me when I was young how to work out 
properly. And I'm sure I got some issues, but it's always control, form. And I teach right. that to my kids, like have control of the weight. If you can't do that much, that's fine. Cut the weight back, but don't give up on the form. And then you got the other guys. I saw the guy oh, working out right next to him on Saturday. I'm doing incline chest dumbbells. I've got 50s. I'm feeling pretty good today. Ooh, yeah, I'm making 50s. It. And I'm hitting eight with them. Good form. Nothing. I have enough control to put them on my knees, kind of slingshot my way forward, lay and put them down on the ground. This guy puts hundreds up. And I'm going, I'm just, again, I'm looking at him, be doing my people watch. I'm like, this guy's dead. There's no way. Like, I'm watching you. I'm like, you're struggling getting him off the rack. And now you've got one in each hand. And I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm anticipating he's going to ask me for a spot. You have to. Right. This guy is going to drop him on his face. And I'm just waiting. I'm like purposely not starting my next set because he has to ask me for a spot. It's right. either me or the guy next to him. And the guy next to him, he looks pretty fit too. So I'm like, right. either way, 50-50, right. he's asking one of us. No. He puts those things up there. And what does he do? He does this. He does this. He's like, it looks like he's like, you know, like trying to fight his trying way out swim? of bed, like <laughs> swim, like fine, fine. He finally gets him to about here. And then he gets here, pushes him up, and then drops him and clangs it all to the ground. They go flying. And I'm just like, again, I'm like, bro, you almost killed me. <laughs> and I was and I'm four just feet like, away from you. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, give it up. I just, the, the, the macho-ness, the over-the-top, like, I just wish people would have, like, I just, and I get to each their own. Maybe it works for life. I mean, who am I? I'm not throwing rocks in a glass house, but I mean, like, man, just control the way. Do you? Like, people stop trying to impress everybody. And they're like, that was unimpressive. Well, I saw a video the other day talk, making fun of all this, right? So, what do you do? You, you, you uh, when you lift too much weight, right? Yeah. You get to the rack and you go and you, and you, and you can't make it budge, then, because you realize it's too heavy. Yeah. The smart thing is just adjust it and just go, right? No, no, no. What is what is the what does the gym guy do? Oh, oh, oh the old so fake I'm injury. Fake injury. It's like in the cornerback <laughs> gets beat deep and all of a sudden he's got a hamstring issue. <laughs> so you fake oh, yeah. the injury. You fake uh, the injury, right? Then then you have the, the obligatory you finish one set and you aimlessly walk around the gym. Mm -hmm. Like you circle, just yeah. these big circles around the gym. Oh, yeah. <laughs> While you're taking, you're huffing a pump. Oh, for sure. Then, then the next one, when you get heavy weights and you have to scream like along the gym so everybody hears you. <laughs> so this guy just had like 10 or 15 different takes of all the things that you must do if you're a guy going to a gym. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what I did do, right? Like, listen, I'm not claiming to be the, I am not Mr. Gym Rat, like, right? I'm getting back into it. I know, I do know a lot about the gym. I like to work out, but I like to stay in my zone, right? And so the, the other day when I was doing chest, I got to uh, the decline, just the hammer strength individual machines. And I like to start at about, I think I was starting with like a plate on each side with 25s, you know, like on it right. too. So quick math was 70 70 on each side you know decline it's, it's pretty easy but there was tens on there was somebody had that but two tens and i'm like oh well i'm not gonna do these i wasn't paying attention i was that guy i was like look do people watching and i grabbed the two tens with one hand and as i slid them off I, I let go of this hand and i thought i had both of them in this hand i let go of the 10 pound weight landed on your toe landed on my toe oh landed oh, oh, oh. on my big toe <laughs> I thought I was dead. I thought I was going to keel over in the middle of the gym. I mean, that it landed right thought, on the edge. Thought I thought it was done. I was going to amputate it. I was like, if, if primetime Deion Sanders doesn't need all his toes, I don't need all mine either. I was I was ready to cut it off. So listen, we're not perfect. Like I, said, I got my own faults in the gym. Oh, I have a But, oh, one. man, I dropped a 10-pound plate on my, you know, like a 10-pound. Wait, it hurt. Yeah, well, I can imagine that hurts. So, um, I think we need to address the elephant in the room. Okay, let's do it. In our business. Oh, okay. The new changes coming around. We got some with forms. Buyers, we got some forms, business. some forms, and some more forms. So, so the new buyer situation. <sighs> right. Um, what do you think? How do you feel? What do you I, think it's going to do? Um, we can't talk specifics. Sure. But just in general. We can if you call us. Yeah. And we get, we have a proper consultation. Right. If we have a proper buyer's consultation with you, we can actually absolutely discuss exactly how things Here's work. what I here's my take on it. And 
I think just like the gym, you're going to have multiple different people operating here. Right. Right. You're going to have the, you're going to have the newbie people, right. That are so floored by what they're hearing and watching and seeing on social media, uh, that they are going to freak out and are already freaking out okay. and they'll be driving Uber or looking for other jobs or something, trying to make like, you know, like, you know, it's like one thing is you move to Hollywood to be an actor and you end up waiting tables to try to make like, I think there's going to be some people that are starting to freak out and look for alternate sources of income right. because they just, they don't feel like it's going to be hard. I think you're going to have your old goats that have been doing this for umpteen million years. I'm not changing nothing. They can say whatever they want. I'm going to do this and I'm going to push it. And if they don't like it, they can come after me. Well, they're, they're going to come after you. Yeah. Um, let's just go ahead and put that on the table. Um, then I think you have the middle range. Okay. And it's the experienced agents. But what they're going to do is that they're just going to be like, okay, I've read it. I don't really see how this changes a lot. It's just saying we have to be better at our job. We actually have to do our job. We have to have conversations and explain things to our clients. Like, I don't think that's far-fetched for, you know, when we go in to any business and ask for an explanation. Oh, why am I being charged with this? Or why does this come in? Now we have to explain it to them. Make sure we're all on the same page early in the transaction so that there's more transparency. Okay. Like, what are you afraid of? If you're not hiding anything, you shouldn't be worried about it. Then I think of that middle group. It's kind of like this afternoon mom criminal influencer, <laughs> right? The, in that middle group, you have that same people that says, okay, I see what it is. Oh, I understand it. I'm not freaked out about it. And I'm not going to try to say I'm not, uh, I'm an old school guy, but I'm going to see how I can beat the system. Like, because I'm so smart, I'm going to figure out a way around it. Right. And I think those are the people that are going to end up in trouble too, because they're going to, they're doing a disservice to their clients. They're going to spend more time worrying about them and how they beat the system to get paid that they're going to realize that they're not really doing a good fiduciary requirement to, for their clients and their clients are going to feel slighted. They're going to end up losing clients because they spend more time worrying about them and how to beat the system. than just be like, okay, here it is. Great. This is the sun wake the sun set, the sun rises at eight instead of seven forty five. It is what it is. Let's keep it moving. So so it's funny that you have that take on it because um, once this was announced, right, a couple months ago when the lawsuits. I mean, we've been hearing about the lawsuits for over a year, um, but once everything started moving and settlements started coming in and stuff, um, most of the commercial agents that do residential and commercial or that do strictly commercial, um, we all were like, all right. Like, it's not a big deal. It's kind of what we do on a daily basis, right? Right. So we've been under the impression of why is everybody freaking out over now having to talk to clients about money? Like, we have to do it all the time. Like, we do it on every single transaction. We never know what we're going to get paid when we go into to look at a building or look at a transaction. We put on there what we deserve or what we feel we deserve and what we're worth, and we just play it by ear. Um, but the buyers know what we're getting paid. The sellers know what we're getting. I mean, everybody knows. And I've been saying since the beginning, you know, in, in all the meetings, I'm like, why don't we just do it the way we do it in commercial? We write yeah. it on the contract. And I was always told, oh, no, I don't know if that's even going to fly. Well, guess what? It's on the contracts now because it flies. Like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with everybody yeah. clearly knowing what you're going to get paid. Um, I've been saying it for months, and everybody was telling me, no, 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 I don't even know if that's legal. Well, then every commercial agent in the entire country has been breaking the law because we've been doing it for 20 years like, oh. the same way. Like, we've always put it on the contracts. <laughs> well, and I think to answer your question, too, here is that I think there's two reasons why – People are freaking out about it, and, and I forget exactly how you said it a minute ago, but there's two reasons. One, why people are having a hard time with it is because, oh, well, they, didn't, they don't show that part on selling Sunset or selling Las Vegas or HGTV. Nobody says, nobody shows you you have to get, you know, involved with your clients and negotiate for them. It's just rainbows and kitty cats out there and making money, right? Like, that's why I got into the industry when the market was hot and I could throw a rock and hit somebody who was looking to buy or sell right. and multiple offers. Like 
No, this is a way to print money. So now it's weeding those people out. I think it's a good thing for home sellers and buyers because it's going to weed out those people. And the second part of that, it's going to weed out the people that have no value. And I think that's what people are now, some of these agents are now concerned about. It's like, oh shoot, I got to justify being paid X, Y, Z number, right? 5,000, 10,000, a percentage, whatever it is, whatever you're now offering that your services, the, the rate of what you are charging to perform those services, People are now being the question like, well, what kind of value do you bring for that money? And that's where I think that a lot of these agents too are freaking out. They're like, how am I going to sit in front of a buyer and justify my cost now? Whether it's $5, $1,000, $10,000. How do you sit in front of a buyer and say, this is why I'm, I charge this much. Just like you're going to sit in front of a, a doctor or a lawyer. Hey, well, why do you charge this much to get a nose job? Why do you charge this much to defend me on a criminal case? Like, well, because this is what I do. Here's my track record. Here's how I keep you out of jail. Here's how I, you know, make your nose the most beautiful nose you've ever seen in your life. You know, like, and now some of these agents that don't have systems, they don't have content, they don't have structure, they don't have the experience to negotiate it. And that they're like, yeah, why, why would you pay me that money? That's a good question. Uh, let me get back to you on that. <laughs> you know? So I think that, that plays a big part. We're in our office. We've been talking about it for a long time. We've been training our team, what the value we have, how we operate. You know, like you look in this room between your side with commercial side, my side with the residential side, other businesses. You have people like Amanda, how this part. You have Mercy, oh, they're handling that part. We've got three admins handling this part. So it's like right there, the value, like when, when you sign on with us, you get all of us. At any given time, they talk to you, they talk to me, they deal with Mercy, another shelling agent, uh, you know, whatever. We've got marketing, like, so some of these people that are like, that got into it for that quick, easy print the money, they should be nervous. Well, it's it's never been a quick and easy print the money business, right? It right. takes time to build and establish yourself. The problem is most people don't want to take the time to get there, right? Everybody thinks it's, you know, it's HGTV. Let me show you three homes. All right. You're, you're a, a box cutter and you make $1.7 million, you qualify for a house. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, like that's, that's not really what happens in life. I mean, it's harder to get people qualified. It's harder to get <laughs> I'd like to buy this $500,000 home. I don't have a job uh, or I just switched industries, complete different industries. Um, and my credit score is 593. Like, but I'm qualified. Like, yeah. Um, so, so I think that that's the, the, what's happening is the industry as a whole, right? I spoke to somebody who was selling the other day, and I told them, hey, this is what's going on now. And they were like, okay. Yeah. Like, it's really not that big a deal. I think the people that are freaking out about it more than anything, I think are the agents. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think the, the buyers or sellers really are that concerned you're going to have some buyers that are going to be penny conscious. You know, they're going to be, because they because a lot of first-time home buyers are going to be tough. A lot of VA buyers that are coming in with no money down are going to be kind of in a, in a similar situation. But I think that if, if you sit down, right, as an agent, and you're trained on how to have a buyer consultation, how to, how to talk. Because in the past, it's always been, they call you from a, from a sign or from Zillow and say, <laughs> Hey, Aaron, I want to go look at this house. Right, and, right. and Aaron just runs to the house. Right, right, right. Not even are you pre-qualified. Most right. of them don't even ask that question. They just run to the house, open the door. Um, well, now it's going to force you to say, hey, come into our office because I have to have a buyer broker agreement signed that you're actually hiring me to show you properties. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is my experience level. And this is my, you know, what we offer and what our team offers and what we can bring to the table. And I think for most it's, I think it's a good thing. I mean, I, I agree. It's a bad thing. I totally agree. I think it's a good thing that now you have to provide value. You have to be completely transparent with your clients, right? Which we have always been. That's why I think, and that's a great point. I think that's why we're not freaking out. Right. You're just like you're, you're asking us to do something we already do, but just add like one more piece of paper. Uh, okay, fine. Right. We're always transparent. We always tell everybody exactly what they're going to get through. Um, when they have situations arise during the transaction, we're there for them, yes. right? We, we provide the value, we provide the service, we show what, why they're paying us to do the service. As a buyer, when, they, when they're buying a property and they have a problem uh, during an inspection or during a walkthrough or even after the purchase when they have a, a repair problem and they need help, 
like they call us and we're there to provide support and provide what they want. So what what what's changed for us, for our team and how we operate on a daily basis? What has changed? Nothing. And, Nothing for us. And I think this morning during our team meeting, it was it was totally prevalent. Is that we actually discussed because we have a lot of listings coming up and, and going on and working. We work with a lot of sellers and stuff, and we're like. We have a really good strategic advantage here and how we landing to save our clients more money. Exactly. Like like we we the way that we started laying out our strategic plan, like since we already have all this value that we've already created, how can we now double down on this value? And we came up with a couple few strategies that are like, dude, we now adapt this price and we utilize instead of trying to fight the system, we use it and say, fine, okay. We see what you want us to do. We've already been doing it. But now, since other people have not been using it and the other agents out there want to fight the system and they don't want to deal with it and they weren't prepared for this, we're going to use this to our advantage because we've been prepared. We've built our team on this, knowing that this was coming and we built a structure around it. We're now going to use that information as doubling down with our ammo. And now we're going to take advantage of those people that aren't prepared for this and and save our clients even more money and put more money in their pocket. Of course. And and that's the whole goal, right? The whole goal is... How do you help your client get the best possible deal in the largest investment that they will make in their entire life? Right? Mm-hmm. How do you go from somebody who uh, is, is buying a house for the first time, whether it's a $150,000 condo to a $9 million project, right? How do you help them get the most benefit, the most bang for their buck, and see the most return and and i think that's what we've been doing since day one so for us it's not a big deal no for a lot of people they're freaking out and i'm just like i said i mean we were we had a, a huge team meeting an office meeting the other day and i just i just stood up and i just said like i think everybody's overthinking this yeah like if this is a normal way of doing business then it shouldn't be a big deal and it shouldn't for us it's not we had we had a, a good conversation i think with our team today um, as a result of this, I think we have two or three people this week that want to talk to us about joining the team mm-hmm. because they're like, okay, we, we need to strategically figure this out. And apparently you guys have, because you guys aren't freaking out. You're just, yeah. <laughs> you're just going business as usual. And it's, and it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's transparency, which we've always had. We've always talked to our clients and told them exactly what yes. the situation is. Um, maybe a form or two different, whatever. Um, and that's it. But at the end of the day, it's it's still what I think that our our business and what we have done as a team is focused on, which is providing service to the client. And and that's and I think again, that's the that's the final nail in the coffin right there is that mindset of the people that are freaking out. Why are they freaking out? Are they freaking out because of what their clients are going to experience, or how it affects them as agents? It's them. Right? The ones that are freaking out are like, oh my God, my pay is going to be this, my, this, my, that. I'm going to have to do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like that's part of your problem. Your mindset is so me, 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 I, 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 that you are, you have your blinders on. When you shift from that and make it about the clients and do your job that you're being paid to do, which is take care of your clients by your fiduciary requirement that the law states you have to do, but build that relationship, go to work for them. The, the, the money follows, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, like we saw the first football game, right? Yeah. Like I know you're excited about that. You know, you see, you see, you got the bears and who are the Texans, right? Texans. You got two, two young quarterbacks. One's already now kind of already come out and proven themselves as a Texans. Like they didn't, D'Amico Ryan's and the Texans, nobody put them on the map last year. Like, ah, whatever. All of a sudden, they can make the playoffs. They win a playing game, wild card game, and you know everyone's like, okay, right? Now you got the Bears, brand new quarterback. You know they yep. pay all this money to. It's like now prove it, right? Now some of these other guys, like, like okay, he, the pressure is now on him to go out and prove that he hasn't th- he hasn't operated in this arena, and now seeing like the pressure that's being put on him, is he gonna fold? Is he gonna? We've seen plenty of first round picks that they get the money, they get the stuff, but it's always been about them, them, them. And we talk about these system quarterbacks, right? So does Caleb Williams come out and be a me guy? Well, look at me. I sat out. You know I'll get on my Caleb Williams rant where yeah. this guy, <laughs> right? Like sitting You're a out, back 12 guys. <laughs> uh, sitting out this game and, you know, this and that. It's me, 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 right? I want to see if he can become a team player. Put the team first, which is the client. Then you go to a guy like a Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, 
he's going to get paid at some point, but he's not playing. He plays with his team. He plays within the game, you know? And so it's going to be interesting to see how these agents, which way they go. Are they a me, me, me agent or are they about their clients? And if you you take, you know, one thing that, that, so, you know, that I've never been a Caleb fan. Right. Like I haven't. Yeah. Sign me up. Like I'm not a fan, but I did hear something from him this past week where former players were dogging him. And I was like, wait a minute, why are you dogging this young guy? And I almost felt like I was coming to his defense, which is strange for me because I've never been a fan. But apparently he was in the locker room, right? He's a leader. As a rookie, he's still the number one overall pick, so he has to take that role on whether he wants to or not. Um, And apparently he walked around the locker room and told the, the, the teammates, both veterans and rookies, hey, guys. You know, let's pick up our water bottles and let's not leave such a mess in this locker room. The custodians have a big enough facility to clean every day for us to make an additional mess for them to have to pick up after All us. All right, fair enough. I can get on board with that. So I was like, you know what? That's a pretty that's a pretty big move as a rookie to go up to a veteran and say, hey, pick up your water bottle there, you, uh, Mr. Stud Muffin. Because <laughs> we, we can't leave even a mess for people. It's fair. But it's it's... I was like, well, you know what? But you had people come out and say, hey, you're a young buck. You better not be talking to anybody before they hey, shove you in a You pick up my water bottle. <laughs> before they shove you in a locker. That's your and job right sure now. You, they'll hang you by your jersey in a locker and you won't be able to touch the ground. Like, don't get dumb. <laughs> well, it's, so, it's certainly going to be interesting in so, both that world and the real estate world. Yeah, so it's going to be fun. But like I said, I think that um, – if you have questions either in Florida or here in Vegas, in Nevada, call us. Yeah, that's the best way to like, do it. Call us. We'll talk to you through it. We'll, we'll, even if you don't use us, but you just are concerned about yeah. what's going on, call us. Let's let's talk about it because that's that's what we do anyways. You know, in case you guys haven't figured out. Like, we're here to edumacate. We're here to edumacate. And uh, I don't think uh, Aaron and I are ever accused of being at a loss for words. <laughs> I know. We'll, we'll talk. You want some time to kill? We'll talk for you. We got plenty of time to have conversations. So uh, next week, we're, I'm going to be on site from Mega Agent Camp at Keller Williams mm-hmm. in Austin, Texas. Um, we booked this trip a while ago. Yeah. Because a former agent, see, that's what a team, I think, Uh-oh. what our team is truly about. Right? Our team, I, I, like I tell everybody on the team, in the office, we're like a big fraternity. Yeah. Outside the office, I think we're like a family. Like, everybody's always concerned about everybody, and, and, and we always are trying to make sure everybody's okay. But we booked the, the trip to Austin with two purposes. One, to go to Mega Camp and kind of get some new information, especially around the law, and kind of figure out what other large producers are doing um, around the country. But also because somebody on our team, they used to be our team member, Ray. We loved him. He, Cuban guy, great guy. Um, just had a baby. Oh, so we're gonna go check out the baby and. Okay. So now we're there. I don't know if Mercy's actually gonna go to the event or if she's gonna be with the baby the whole time. I'm guessing baby the whole time. I, <laughs> I'm guessing. If I had to pick one, yeah, that guessing, would be the one. I'm guessing baby the whole time. And then Amanda has a, a visitor coming in town next week. SWAT, SWAT team week. will be there. SWAT team yes, will be there. Yes, we will have the SWAT team there. 100% watching out. Um, we will I mean, have may, alarms all over the house. <laughs> maybe while you're gone, I'll go, I'll go see my buddy uh, Johnny Tahiti and get a, get a consultation, get back on Ooh. good graces with him. Oh, see, oh, Johnny, I, 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 did I, I don't know if I told you. So Johnny was watching our video. Johnny Tahiti, shout out to him. He's an amazing tattoo artist. I feel like he's part of the family already. I've never even met the I, guy, I had but a he's, he's, he's like the third person in our podcast. <laughs> he is. He is. He's, he's, he's here in spirits. I like it. I like so it. we had a conversation, right? And he's like, hey, um, I'm kind of upset at Aaron. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. And I was like, well, why are you upset at Aaron? He's like, well, because. Aaron, he's going to be more upset now at me. Aaron compared me to The Rock. Just saying. He seems like that kind of guy. And that's what he thought I was going to look like. And. You shot it down, <laughs> saying I wasn't like The Rock. So he should be mad at you, not no, me. No, no, because you brought up the you brought up of what he should look like. 
I put I, I said what I envisioned him looking like. Right. Okay, that, that's what he should look. like. I didn't say it's what mind. he should look like. That just it's what he does look like in my well, mind. Apparently, his girlfriend saw the saw the the podcast and was like, "I guess you need to start hitting the gym, bud." <laughs> so. Johnny, if you're watching this, <laughs> this is Ed. You be mad at Ed, not me. I'm on your side here. Johnny, you know you're my boy, but I think it's all Aaron's job. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree, Johnny. I so, disagree. So when you do the tattoo on Aaron that we're going to get for him, uh, just make it as painless, painful as possible. Yeah. I'm going to end up with a like a Smurf mermaid on my shoulder or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Have a good week. Let's do this.